Hello everyone, let's talk about probate. What is it, why should you care, and how to avoid it? The need for a probate proceeding may be triggered upon the death of a person. I say may because not every estate requires a probate. For example, a probate may not be needed if one has an estate plan in place or if the person who has died did not own property that requires a probate. Usually, probate proceedings are needed when a person dies owning a home, land, or mineral interest solely in their name, meaning that there is no other person on the deed as a co-owner. Same thing if people die without listing beneficiaries on their financial accounts, such as investments, life insurance, pension plans, or bank accounts, and so on. These companies may ask for a probate proceeding that determines who the heirs are in order for them to pay out. These are some of the most common examples, but there are many other situations out there that may require a probate proceeding. So what is probate? Probate is the legal process by which the court system distributes the property of the deceased person, pays their debts, and settles any disputes. During probate, the court supervises the processes that transfer legal title of the property from the estate of the person who has died to his or her beneficiaries. Where there is no will or trust, nothing in writing at all, the laws dictate who the beneficiaries are, and the court will appoint a person to be in charge of handling your estate, which may not be the best person to handle your money. When there is a will in place, but nothing else, no trust, a probate is still needed in most circumstances. This is one of the biggest estate planning myths, that a will avoids probate. It does not. In fact, a will has to be first validated by a judge in order for the provisions within to be considered. The difference between a valid will and no will is that through a will, by having something in writing, you pick your beneficiaries and the person in charge of distributing your assets. Otherwise, the court process is somewhat similar to the administration of an estate without a will. In an overly simplified manner, it goes like this. Someone will likely have to hire an attorney to file a petition which says, Judge X, who would be you, has passed away. Please allow me to handle their estate. The judge then appoints a person to serve as personal representative. If several people apply, the judge will pick one based on the evidence provided and on a priority list set by the laws of the state. If there is a valid will, the judge will likely appoint your nominated person. I would say that the cost in dollars for these legal proceedings starts somewhere at three to four thousand dollars, but can, can go up many thousands of dollars. There are many things to consider in discussing probate fees, such as the number of assets and heirs involved, how well everyone plays together, creditors, the sale of real property, and so on. It is a draining process emotionally, physically, and financially. In addition, probate proceedings are public, so they make the perfect playground for creditors, resentful family members, and even predators. Only in the end of the probate, which is several months after the petition was filed, after all the creditors and the lawyer's fees are paid, only then the heirs will receive the deceased person's property according to the will, if there is any, or if not according to the state laws. You do not want to put your family through probate, so let's talk about how to avoid it. One way is through trusts, a revocable living trust. The most common type of trust is a legal document that allows you to establish a separate entity, the trust, to hold legal title to your assets while you are alive and to name trustees to manage those assets according to the trust terms. Typically, the people create the trust, the people who create the trust, serve as trustees during their lifetime. Upon their disability or death, the trust terms appoint a successor trustee who then continues to manage or distribute the assets held in trust. Basically, we take your real property, deed it into the trust, as to allow you during your lifetime and your designated successor trustees upon your death to manage these assets through a private process and without court involvement. Say that again, without court involvement. There are other ways to avoid probate, such as through a transfer on death deed, joint tenancy, lifetime gifts, and so on. As these alternatives may come with serious consequences, please consult with an attorney before choosing any of them. 
The cost of unintended consequences or to fix an ineffective transfer oftentimes is just as high, if not more so, than getting an estate plan done by an estate planning attorney. If you think it will take too much time now to figure everything out, imagine what your loved ones will have to go through when you're not around to answer questions or give directions. So do not wait. Our phone number is 405-857-8231. Please be sure to check our website and Facebook page for our free webinars and free in-person educational events. Please do not hesitate to give us a call if you have any questions or comments. Thank you for watching.